sun's going down here it's getting a little cooler this evening so i figured it'd be a good time to go climb up this little pasture silo and get that see if we can get that opened up uh we got the manure spreader on the old 830 case there um you'll notice i have a straight pipe on it now that was kind of out of necessity i was spreading fertilizer with it the other day and it was choking me out of the cab because the bottom of the muffler was rusted out so it was blowing the exhaust into the cab and that's all i had so right now it's a straight pipe so brian at muffler delete you should be proud but anyway we'll climb up the silo i'm running low on battery here so i might not get too much footage because the other battery is dead also so we'll get some footage up in the silo and see what it looks like this is our pasture silo it's just got a bunk out here it's not real big it's 14 foot diameter 25 feet tall uh, we got corn silage in here from last fall and i did put a plastic cover on it um, last year i had a cover on it but i wound up having rats get up there and chew holes in it so we did still have quite a bit of waste um, i'm hoping that that hasn't happened this year because if they stay sealed they usually save quite a bit but we'll climb up there and see uh see what it looks like i don't have a conveyor up here i'm just gonna back the spreader alongside and then i'll go up and fork the moldy stuff down and then uh, paul will just pitch it into the spreader so that's how we're gonna get it in there because I can't get the skid loader close enough to reach under the chute, so. Well, here we are up in the silo. Doesn't look like the rats have been in here this year, so that's good. This is just a plastic film. You put over it and then seal it around the outside edge with some silage, so. Oh, that should work out pretty good, I think. We'll climb in here and pull this cover off take a door out over there and, and uh, get this thing down morning everybody welcome back to trinity dairy it is july 10th a uh, beautiful day out sun shining um crops are looking good so that's good um we could probably use a little shot of rain again but we did get an inch and a tenth a few days ago so or inch and a quarter so that was good um this morning what i've been doing i got the our alice chalmers sickle mower hooked on the john deere here just trimming some of the edges of the driveway and stuff like that some thistles out in the pasture so i got a little bit more trimming to do later i might get a little video of that um the silo up in the pasture uh we've been feeding out of that for a few days i didn't get any video of setting the unloader up or anything um but i'm hoping i do have to go up there today i think and check see if it needs a door changed so i'll try to get some video of the unloader running up there and kind of how we feed up in that bunk um so i've got that set up a little different than i was doing last year last year it was uh pretty much a armstrong uh feeder up there we used the wheelbarrow but this year i've kind of got it set up so i can run it into the uh big skid loader bucket here and spread it out um that's been working pretty good so but we're not going to do that right now um i did feed the cows for this morning so they're good um but anyway i'm back to the 1066 here um i had talked about before that the wedges came loose and this right side wheel slid in um, to the point where it was actually, I don't know that it would have hit the cab. It was pretty close, but I think, I don't know that it could move any farther on the axle. Um, and in the last video, I had talked about that this piece was gone. I thought it had fallen off. Um, well, I don't know, it might have. I don't know if there was even one over there. 
but I was kind of mistaken. Um, I did a little research after, and also we had a few comments that kind of said the same thing, um, that those, those don't do anything to hold the wheel in place. The wedges inside, um, that's what holds the wheel from sliding. That other horseshoe looking strap is a, uh, basically a tool to pop the wedges loose. Um, I did get them out. Here's one here. It's socket on there yet. Uh, the other one I did get loose. It's not out of there yet. But um, anyway, what I did, seeing as how I didn't have that tool for this side and I didn't want to have to pull the dual off the other side to get it out, um, what we did is I took the outside wedge out with the bolt and then I had a piece of channel iron here. I slid inside here up against the back wedge and then I had my port of power there, put the one end against the channel iron and hook the other end on here, put some good pressure on it. And then I took my two pound hammer and hit that corner of that channel iron and it popped right loose. So anyway, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the forks on the skid steer um, so I can get under the tire and lift up a little bit on it. And then I'll hook a chain to it and see if I can slide it back. So that's what we're gonna work on now. All right, well that moved out good. Um, I'm just gonna grab a tape measure and just measure, make sure this is in the same place as it was against the other one. Um, if I have it pulled out too far and I go to put the dual on, the tires will touch before the dual's tight. So I just wanna make sure I don't have that issue, but I think I'm about, about right there. So um, okay. we'll measure that and check it out. Four inches. And this one is. I think it come out more yet. What's this one? Yeah, it looks like my camera's very. There you go. So, Dan, go drink your coffee, Dan. What? And there goes. The ants are going to drink my coffee. They're all crying. No, the ants are going to drink your coffee. I saw Ant drink a Coke once. Huh? I saw Ant in a Coke once. That's what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I saw it too. I dumped it out. I saw Ant in it. Yeah. So I didn't want to drink it just in case there was something in it. Yeah, what if the chunk got caught? Ooh, wiggly, right? Well, that's what you want if you were trying to get it loose. Well, it it's not loose. It's loose. I'm trying to get it out more. It moved. Now the wheel's straight. I saw the wheel on the tent move. What's that? I saw the wheel on the tent move. Yeah, I see the move. I'm just going to measure and see if I'm in the right spot before I'm looking again. We can put the wedges in, tighten it down. Um, once I get them in, I'm gonna drive it around for a while without the dual on, and then so I can check that again in case I need to tighten it a little more. But So we'll get stuff cleaned up here a little bit, and then we'll do that. All right, we're up here at the uh, little silo up in the pasture here. Um, I'm gonna climb up and see. I think it needs a door changed. So then we'll try to get a little video of it running and then kind of show you how we feed down here. Uh, my brother Paul's here so he can run it while I'm up there. Um, and then we just got this is cement bunk here and I got a high tensile wire running around it so they can't climb into it. Um, I'm going to sweep out the manger sweepings from this morning's feeding and then I just got a cone on here with a little extension so I can pull the skid steer bucket under there, fill it up and then just dump it um, in the bunk or wherever we want to put it. So. I'm going to take this cone off and climb up there. 
just in the chute of the silo here now climbing up um, these are the doors uh, you have to drop as the silage goes down these unload from the top Plenty of room to drop in the door. All right, so here's our unloader up here. It's a Van Dale. Um, this is my second year using this one. I bought it. Uh, it was actually I bought it used, but it was only used, I think, three seasons in a 40-foot silo. So um, basically, it was a new unloader. Um, it's the same brand of unloader. We have a Van Dale in our silo by the barn too. Uh, that one is a lot older. That's an old. It's getting pretty worn, that one is, but it still still does the job. So um, this is corn silage from last fall. Uh, same, the silo by the barn is full of corn silage from them yet, too. So anyway, I will set the camera up here and get this changed. <coughs> I'll just run it a little bit, make sure it's going to work. Okay, go ahead. They got augers under here that pull it in, and a blower there that throws it out, and it just goes down the chute, and then your drive wheels here that push it around. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Like I got a little bit of a squeak. I meant to come back up here with my oil can. Must be one of those uh, ends of the augers there where they go through the support. There's a little bushing in there, I think. I don't think it's a bearing. Um, must be getting a little squeaky. They don't have grease fittings on them, but or it could just be. I don't think it's rubbing on the wall, but anyway, we'll get that later. We'll get some silage down now and get the cows fed. Crank it down some more. 
there's just a winch hand winch over here um, and the cable goes up to the top and then over a tripod and back down to the unloader inside and if you're wondering why the winch is over here and the switch and everything is over there it seems kind of weird um, the only reason that is is this had a pats unloader in it for a while and that one was set up so you had to raise the unloader you pulled it up with a tractor so the cable had to come out that side so you had room to drive the tractor that way to raise the unloader um, and once we put this one in, I didn't want to try to move in the tripod and doing all that. So uh, that's why the winch is over there. There's that. Just going to take my high line pole down here. Hold the wire up for the skid steer bucket. Paul's gonna take that bucket load and uh, dump in the feeder wagon for the dry cows out there. And then we'll, uh, he gets done with that. We'll go see if we can lock that dual down. I stopped over a neighbor of ours, tractor mechanic. Um, I actually think he was a mechanic for International for a uh, number of years. So I stopped and asked him about how to, best way to tighten those wedges and stuff. And he said, three quarter inch drive ratchet or breaker bar and about a four foot pipe and crank it down. When you think you got it tight, he said, keep pressure on your bar and have somebody hit the axle with a sledgehammer a few times get uh get a little bit more pulled out of them so that's why i waited till paul was here crank them down good i got the threads cleaned up on that long bolt that goes between the wedges that sucks them together so i cleaned them all up good got the rust off of them i'll put some anti-seize on that bolt he told me i seen some debate i checked out some different sites on greasing you know, if you grease the wedges or not grease the wedges um I don't know he told me don't grease the wedges just put anti-seize on the on the threaded bolt that goes between them so that's what i'm going to do and then once we get it tightened down um i will have to uh, i'm just going to leave the dual off for a while till it's ran some and i'll check it again but i did get looking here i think i am going to have to try to pull that dual hub off the axle because uh I don't think I've got enough room to get a socket to get out um, far enough to get the pipe on there with that hub on there. So I was hoping to avoid that, but he told me to put a put the socket on. I'll see once I get the wedges in there. I don't have them in there right now. Um, get those in there. Get that on. He said have an extension on so you can get out past here and then put a chain around the axle and the extension to hold it up so you can uh, so it's not bending down on you but I don't think I'm gonna have enough room I think this is gonna have to come off or at least get slid back a ways so I might have to loosen that up so I'll probably put them in here now and I don't know I got the wedges here got them cleaned up I did take a wire brush and a grinder and clean up the surfaces here um, and like I said, cleaned up the threads on there. So we'll get some anti-seize on here and stick those in. Get this massive beast back on the back on the road. All right, well, we're going to. Um, I don't have too much battery left on this, but we're going to have to pull this dual hub off because I can't get straight enough on that wedge bolt to tighten it. So. Um, we did get one to come out. We're going to try if we can get these back two out and drop this half moon clamp down here. Then I might have room without having to move the whole hub. But we'll see because they're not wanting to break loose too, too easily. But big pole handler. 
Oh, there we go. Little PB blaster on there. Come right off. Oh, good. Maybe we can drop that and not have to pull the whole thing off. Here, we should be able to impact it off now. Bingo. Probably half the battle, just all the crud that was in the hole was locking it up. I rattled them with that impact quite a while just to try to loosen that up before we started even. Go ahead and At all. Yeah, go ahead and keep going on it. Oh, that finds a lot of room. Yeah, he said it would make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put, well, I don't think the ratchet would fit on there anyway. I'd have to be way out. <coughs> Which, that's what he said. If you put extension on to get past the axle, I suppose if you had a ratchet, you'd have to, but this is getting pretty straight anyway. Morning, everybody. Tuesday, July 13th. Um, we got that wheel or tightened down on that 1066. Um, so I'll kind of show you that. My battery died when we were uh, finishing it up there the other day, but we did get it did get it finished. Um, it went pretty good, actually. Um, not much to see, I guess, but it's all tightened down. Um, got the got the right gap there now. I kind of measured that out. So um, basically, what we did is I just had Paul at the breaker bar. He was just reefing on there, and then I just kept smacking the axle with that sledgehammer and it finally finally tightened up it was amazing you know you'd hit it three four times it wouldn't move and then you'd hit it again and all of a sudden that breaker bar would just drop actually there was one time we thought we pulled the threads on it because 
we had hit it a few times and it didn't move and then all of a sudden it just dropped right to the ground but um a couple more times like that and then it wouldn't move anymore so plan is now um i've still got the the, the back two bolts and that clamp out of here um i guess i'm going to leave that out for right now because i'm not going to put the dual on yet i'm going to drive this some um i don't have much use for it right now but um just drive it around anyway some and uh maybe find something to do with it but um let that work a little bit and then i'll check that again and uh before i put all that back together and put the dual on make sure it's good and tight so but anyway so we got that done so that'll be nice to have that back going again